Uh, what what's some other stuff that uh, you got from Thad? Um, well, the voice things, I guess, just like the way it's not in, you can't really tell because it's not in concert pitch, but um, just in general, just the the thickness of the voicings and kind of how he how he tends to orchestrate the band and having like everything right. in there and and putting those crunches like in between. crunches right in the middle of the, the middle like yeah rock. you want the crunches yeah. like right right in crunch the middle up. and and having a lot of color necessarily not coming from always the lead voices but coming from the baritone which i'm like i'm a baritone player so i recognize this a lot but it's something that doesn't happen a lot in a lot of other charts is like utilizing right. the baritone in its unique color i mean it's the only instrument in the band that is truly i mean rhythm section aside that's just the only horn that's truly unique and it has such a unique timbre and yeah, look how high the berry is in bar 49 look how high that is that's like a i mean he got that from ellington too so you know yeah i just i just wanted it on the melody there it just sounded okay. nice there it's yeah, like one of those things where it sticks a, out a sound and that range too i mean when joe temperley was around i used to always like writing for him above the staff because he had a particularly unique sound, and the and you know it's interesting with the baritone is that the variation between one uh, player and another, it's almost as if it can be a different instrument. So under the right circumstances, that works great. And of course, Courtney's playing the part. Right. With a different baritone player, it could sound more mellow, or it could sound like a chainsaw. Because in the wrong hands, the baritone could be dangerous. Yes. Does does everyone understand the uh, the idea of the, the crunches in the middle between sections? How uh, like a tenor sax can be on a, a B and a, a second trombone was on the C right there together. I can give an example. If yeah, I, I actually just saw a couple. Of the, or the, if you want to like see in a concert score like condensed, I can pull that up really. We quick. can we can it's, read. It's hard the, to see we it. Can I, I want to see how the how the choirs of your or of the band work together. Because uh, they're they're overlapping. You're overlapping the tenor part, the tenors with the trombones a lot. You know, spread uh -huh. spread out the spread out the saxes like this, and then the trombones are like this. So there's like a it's like a larger larger spread. Yeah, I guess it it depends on where it is. There's some That's sections right. where they're all just like, and then there's some where it's 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 yeah. I guess it's really in this one it was less. Um, the saxes aren't necessarily grouped with the saxes and the yeah it's it was really just about like the the range of the voice that well, that's what that's voice. what that gave us that's what yeah because you know, the like into you that that's a big thing but then yeah. like in the other charts you know what i mean it's it's a whole nother it's a whole nother thing but it's still giving that same kind of vibe it's just nice to hear it's when it's slow like this yeah you can hear you can actually hear the detail and just like his writing and just like the thickness of the chords and the harmony, what you, you can't hear that when it's going by so quickly. So yeah. like, it's yeah, just, Ray, it's like, Ray it's Wright like it's great, that, but. <laughs> Ray Wright called that transparency when, when the sections would click together and you could see the whole, you, you could, you got, you got it. You got the taste, the whole flavor, the almost like a 3D uh, sound in your ears. It's like you can, it's like you can yeah. live in it. It would be yeah. nice if, it's nice if, it's nice if it's in an orchestra, like, because everything is just, yeah, and, no, and, just having like, it's just everything is there and it's like elongated and it's so dramatic and it's warm. Wide, and like, yeah. It's just, I don't know. There's something like about on stage in a symphony, on stage in a symphony orchestra, when the, when the cellos hook up with, for example, the, the clarinets, on a unison line and it's almost like a laser beam goes between the sections and like you get a starburst and the sound triples in yeah. in, in 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 not necessarily in volume but just in in timbre yeah. it gives it a, and that's the transparency that the thad get, really gave us and yeah. also brooke meyer and maria and and you know really some the the, the people who came after him so yeah, yeah. You know, I must say that a lot of this stuff is a development. I mean, Thad's to you, as an example, is a development of those tootie ballads that came before that when you think about those slow things like Billy Byers chart on second time around, if you know that one, or um, 
uh, you know, uh, what's another good? Uh, Someone's mentioned Little Darlin. That's another Billy yeah, Byers. Yeah, Little Darlin. That's like Little Darlin or any of the uh, swing era stuff, you know? Yeah, Little Darlin is obviously Atomic Bomb Basie, but uh, the Billy Byers Count Me In is is sort of like Little Darlin, but more so, if that makes any sense, um, which is a follow up. Uh, there's a whole Basie album that's all Billy Byers charts. But Thad, Thad and Gil Evans gave us that uh, the ability to to double between sections, cross double, put unisons in the middle of the stuff, but really cool little crunches that go away and move around, and all to try and establish what uh, Courtney calls that you know that transparency. Right. And she really achieved that in this piece. Well, it's just like with Thad, it's like everything the melody is always so it's, it's always so simple the, the you know like the chord progression is always like some sort of form of a blues or a rhythm yeah. changes you know what i mean and then the melody is usually some sort of like pentatonic thing yeah it's usually a very and simple then, and melody then, right <laughs> and then, yeah and so and then it's just like if you took away all of that other stuff it'd be like oh yeah it would still and it's like the the groove the feeling just the the camaraderie of the band, just everything about it. It's not just like what was written. It, it's literally, it's a, I don't know what it is about it, but it's, it's, it's a really special band. I don't know what it is, but we're still talking about it 60 years later. So yeah, but it's just like, if you, but the thing that it's like makes it great is that everyone can listen to it and find something in that. Cause a lot of times you can have stuff that's like, it's like, Oh, this is beautiful. And then some people are like, man, this is like, too simple like this is not enough for me and then it's, sometimes it's like whoa this is way over i don't even know what's going on but then with that it's like it's like oh this feels so good it's like people that it's just like everybody can understand what's going on and get something nice. great out of it mostly because it feels good but then it's just like if you start digging into it and trying to figure out what that is it's like whoa this is a lot more complex than i thought this is so, really cool so sam asks uh, are you from virginia uh talk non sequitur but Oh, uh, I well, yeah, originally, yeah. You have a little twang. Is that is that what you're hearing, Sam? You're hearing in the in the speech, or I'm not from the South. <laughs> I'm from Northern Virginia. That is not the South. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> right. We we definitely yeah. I I'm definitely not a Southerner. That's like I'm. <laughs> but I don't know if I have a twang or not. Probably maybe. I have a, now that I hear it, it's still maybe a little bit mid Atlantic sound. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. It's my sound. <laughs> yeah. So who else besides Thad have you been uh, moved by as far as jazz writers? Um, man. As far as jazz composers, yeah. like writers. Or, or arrangers. Or, composers. or arrangers. I would say, well, right now, the only other person that's really affected me, like, I mean, there's things that I enjoy, but there's not that many things that really make me feel like Thad does. But more recently i've been really getting into brookmeyer i don't i think there's just something about his music too that's just like there's just a genuineness about it and same thing with like when i hear maria schneider's music live it's like yeah. it transports you to another place when you're listening and so it's to me it's like if it doesn't do that for me i i'm like oh yeah this is hip like i i like this it's swinging but it's for me it's like harder to define it's harder to just say like i really enjoy i love this person's music when i say that i really mean it and like brookmeyer stuff was everything i've just been listening so too far so far like there's this album i think it's the last one he did with the vanguard it's called overtime mm -hmm. and oh, there's some really good stuff on there but i i just remember i was i had on my i had on my like headphones and i think it's my speaker i don't know but i was up here just listening and i'm like oh i want to listen to some of that and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna click this brookmeyer thing i'm just gonna listen to that and then i don't know at some point i i was just like spaced out but i think i even fell asleep at one point i don't know what was going on but then i woke up and i was like what is playing it was like it was this mm -hmm. i think it was like the fifth tunes at this at the corner of ralph and gary it was so Oh, amazing and i was like what is going on so and much i just that so and to the whole album <laughs> so much is so beautiful and if and I, there's a there's a new book out by uh, dave ravello from uh, eastman he teaches ar arranging at eastman yeah i know i know I'm about gonna, well i know i know dave, dave comes to our uh, zoom bmi meetings every tuesday yeah. and i know about the book i the book i wish great. i could get it <laughs> oh my god it's great and uh 
it's funny because Brookmeyer is such a melodic writer. Yeah, exactly. That's and the he thing. starts talking about writing tone rows on napkins and shit like that. And I'm like, how do you get melody out of that stuff? That's amazing. He well, finds. It's, just, he, it's he like finds, he's probably like experimenting and trying yeah. to find new sounds because it's like if you hear the beginning where he started, like early Brookmeyer is sort of like you know. Oh, it's, it's way Coast. it's just like the evolution West and that's why like, yeah sure yeah and it's like if you look at i guess really all the right even maria's evolution from when she started and she was writing stuff some of her early stuff was like pretty straight ahead and then it's like this oh, yeah. this development and where she found like okay here i here's me and you know and then no and it's like and she doesn't even define herself as a jazz composer she's just i'm maria schneider i'm a composer and you know it's like not putting somebody in this box that's like well you write modern you write traditional that's who you are and it's like no it's not i'm me i don't know who i am yet I'm that seems like the theme of the night right that, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, this, uh, you know we keep we keep coming up against this uh you know was, is this a jazz band you know what kind of jazz is this it's not really you know We've had a composer it's on music. tonight. Yeah, we've had a composer on tonight who's who said who admits they aren't experienced in jazz, but yet they they're writing convincing music for a jazz band. Man, so, I don't know who's experienced in jazz. <laughs> I'm still trying right. to figure out jazz. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just it's one of those things where we all have different stories and different backgrounds, and it's like the yeah. thing is, it's like it does it does not matter. We all learn what we want to learn. We all find the right. music that connects with us. And then we, it's it's never about like, I studied at this school and that makes me amazing. And I did these right. things and I have all the, it's like people can study all day long with mm -hmm. whoever, wherever at the best place and still not be doing anything. It's like, it's what makes it special is like you and what you have to bring. And that's why like, you can start writing when you're like five years old or maybe younger. It's just like, as long as you're open and, and genuine and, you're that's just right. writing what you feel. That's the most honest thing. And if you can sing it, then it's it's like the same thing of playing. If you can if you can if you can hear it, then you can sing it, then you can play it. And I guess it's the same thing, like replace play it with write it. And it's like that's I feel like that's the best way to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my battery is like, hold on, I gotta <laughs> I gotta get my charger for my computer. Well, Sonny has probably the most important question. What are the quotes behind you written on the whiteboard up there? You got oh um that's some quotes that that's actually not quotes that's stuff that people wrote about me oh at yeah there was this thing where we all uh got together and we were well i got to make sure this doesn't die hold on i'm gonna get the charger okay um but yeah everybody everybody that was at this thing had to we made posters and they had our names on it and it was sort of like a thing where they just put positive just what they pretty much what people thought of you and to kind of take with you. So it's I like having that there because sometimes it's like you get a lot of things from the world, you know, and, and people can tell you a lot of things about yourself that maybe aren't true and they can be hurtful <laughs> and and that might not even be who you are. And it's like but then seeing how other people, you know, actually how, just just being able to connect and have people see your true self and having reminders right. of that is really is really helpful i think that goes especially in 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 the arts and with music because it's, it's such a vulnerable thing it's like this isn't just my piece of music this is like me this is this is literally me showing giving a part of myself and i'm sharing that with you and i hope you enjoy it but yeah. if not that's cool you know what i mean but it's like I hope you, you I hope you, you get something find, out of it. I hope you feel yeah. it. <laughs> you, you want know? to find play you want to find players who appreciate the fact that you are actually, you know, very exposed and this is, you know, you're reaching and it's very important to to establish that communication with your players as well as the audience too. That's Yeah. And yeah. then it's important to take all the risks and do whatever because who cares in the end? It's like exactly. I'm going to take the risks and see and see what happens and if, I don't know what this is going to sound like, but we'll see. That's why I miss live bands. And so, is that your advice for a young for young composers or anyone who wants to get into this? Would would be to take risks and to yes. I don't even know. Like I haven't even been doing this that long, to be honest. And like the only the way that I really learned is like at, there's it's like just start writing and then get stuff played. Like I told that to my. I was doing that at UNT because that's what really made it special. There were nine lab bands. And then I yeah. just was like, I just want to write something 
for these bands, I just want to like write charts all the time. I just want to, you know, it was super exciting. And there's just like this, I don't know. So, and then doing, in doing that, it was like, it was really vulnerable. And there were times where yeah. I had to put myself in this, and I'm just like, whoa, this is embarrassing. But it's like what you learn in those, in those experiences is like invaluable. It's, it's not necessarily like, oh, because something didn't sound good. I'm a bad writer or whatever. I mean, that can go for a lot of things. It's like, no, that just means that let's look at this objectively. How yeah. did, did this work out? Like, why did this not work? What What's the context here? Could this work somewhere else? Like what what's going on? And it's like, and then just, maybe I need to rewrite this, but never trashed. I don't believe in trashing your music. I don't believe in it. It's like, maybe this didn't work out. Maybe I could save this for another time, but I'm going to look at this and try and like, and, and I'm just, it's like, at the end of the day, who cares? It's like, if it, if it, if it, if it bombed at rehearsal, so what? Like someone's going to be like, oh, well, so-and-so is such a like, It's like, it's like, can they do that? Probably not. It's like, hey, how about you come up here, conduct the van, write a chart, like bring something in. Oh, no, no. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's one of those things. So it's like, I, I think at the end of the day, just like putting yourself out there and just writing and not, not saying, oh, I'm going to wait till I'm ready. Because I don't know if anyone's ever ready ever. Like, <laughs> but it's just like just doing it. And that's how I learned is by doing it all the time. Like every chart is something that I'm ex either like experimenting, trying to figure out and, or, you know, and this was kind of like a big stepping stone for me. So some of the stuff that I have that's written later, I can't, I don't have any recordings. I wish I could share, but um, it's just sort of like, you can kind of feel yourself developing. Like, I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with, with like, listening to who you love because i mean that's like and and trying to mimic that not mm. only that because you're never really going to be doing that no. exactly hey any, any andy or alan <laughs> so, or, or nan or uh, or elliot have anything else profound to say i just love her energy man yeah. that just bottle that courtney you're it's gonna go far I, I i feel like i feel like working right now <laughs>